What up, though, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Daily Upside. I'm your host, Keen Rivals, bringing you sports cards news every day. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. As I said, we talk about sports cards, sports card investing, a little bit of NBA, some top shot, pretty much ways that you can make money around the sports market. If you guys haven't already, be sure to head up to the highupsideshow.com. Every day I send out plays that you might be interested in looking at. If you're listening to this podcast, it's really a great you know resource for information. However, the daily newsletter is where people have been making their money. It's where I send the information in real time. The podcast is kind of a recap on the plays that we've made or some of the plays that just happened within the market. So yeah, definitely check that out, highupsideshow.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link's in the description. Same for you guys who are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You can find the link to that in the show notes. If you didn't know, that daily newsletter is free. However, there is a premium membership and it's less than a cup of coffee per week. That's going to get you access to my Discord. You get the place a half an hour before everybody else. And you also get my sports cards pick of the week, which has been pretty on target so far. So yeah, definitely check that out. I would love to see you guys in the Discord and chop it up with you a little more. Moving into some sports cards news, guys. Uh, again, this is always kind of a day behind with this new format that we're doing. Um, a lot of you have seen this, but you know, Blake Griffin, he cleared the hurdle. He dunked. It was amazing. As a Detroit Pistons uh, fan, I guess you can call me that, or native or local, it's good to see Blake Griffin kind of, you know, back playing basketball. That makes him happy. I made a joke a few weeks ago that we should be picking up some Blake Griffin cards before he got traded. And it looks like that was a pretty solid play. So hopefully some of you guys got in on those. But yeah, for those of you who didn't see the dunk, you know, it was a, uh, it, it was pretty, it was pretty chill. It wasn't, it wasn't anything like super iconic or anything of that nature. But, you know, outside of that dunk, the dunk is what made the highlights. What we didn't talk about is how Blake Griffin, you know, was out there dropping passes, you know, really kind of in the post, you know, running the offense. So so, yeah, he only played 15 minutes or whatever, but it was good to kind of see him doing that. Good to see him playing defense. And just another reason why I'm bullish on the Nets for winning the championship this year. Um, so, yeah, not recommending anybody pick up any Blake Griffin cards, but, you know, we've been talking about the Nets a lot. So I kind of want to update you guys on what I think about them. Speaking of the Nets, um, the trade deadline's coming up. They're talking about assets being moved. And according to the Athletic, Spencer Dinwiddie is one of the most unique trade assets. Um I think the Nets have to move him. You know, it sucks that he's injured. He would have been a great contribution to the team, but they need a f- another piece, you know, uh, or why not have one? So definitely going to be interesting to see how that plays out for them. Dinwiddie has a pretty fair contract, and I feel like the, I, don't, I don't know who the Nets are looking for. Maybe another guard, maybe another defensive player. But, yeah, I think they're going to add to their team. They're, they're going to be stacked, man. As long as they can stay healthy, I'm just bullish on the Nets 100%. Moving forward, uh, the Detroit Pistons are looking to trade some people. Uh, Wayne Ellington might be up for grabs. So if anybody needs a, a sharpshooter, then, you know, or I guess he's a sharpshooter, they might be looking to trade him as well as DeLon Wright and, and pretty much anybody else. According to this article, everybody's up for grabs. So, you know, maybe they bring back Spencer Dinwiddie. Maybe they get rid of, you know, one of the star players because those are the kind of trades that we make. So not really excited to bring up the Pistons in this you know podcast or talk about them too much. But they do have a few pieces that, you know, could benefit some teams. So it just goes to show you that there will be some deals made within the next few days. And, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie is looking like a a potential target for the Pistons. And, you know, they have they have a lot of assets they can kind of give back to the Nets. You know, Mason Plumlee's a guy, you know, the Nets could use, you know, Wayne Ellington, DeLon Wright. I mean, that's just a good trade by itself. So, yeah, we'll see how that works out for them. These guys aren't going to, like, make you any money, but they might push the team to the next level that's, you know, in, in the guy you're investing in. So if you're investing in a championship contender, these guys might go to that team and get them to that next level, which then will make you some money. So definitely look out for that. If you start seeing players move, you start seeing teams add different pieces. That's going to be an indicator for you to say, okay, maybe I should buy their star player because now, now they're a little more dangerous or now they have, have a little more depth. So yeah, if, if the Pistons make a move, I believe they're going to do it with the Nets. I believe they're going to try and get Spencer Dinwiddie. And that's going to add a few more rotation pieces to the Nets, which they they greatly need because, you know, a lot of their guys are injured or going down or just having a lot of family issues. You know, when you got three superstars, you got to you got to make sure you have some players there to back them up. Um, a few of you have reached out to me because I've been MIA. Um, a lot of you have been wondering what's going on with the Top Shot newsletter. I will be getting back into the swing of that. I, I've been moving recently. I've been taking care of some some at home things. You guys are going to be excited to see the new 
the new office, the new space. I, I feel like I just got this space done and then I decided to move last minute because, well, some things happen in this space because, you know, things happen. So yeah, that's going to be coming out pretty soon. Still bullish on Top Shot. Um, not, not bullish on every moment like I used to be. There's some moments that I that I'm, I'm not bullish on and that's going to kind of be what this next article is about. I'm starting to realize that sometimes investing is, it's great to talk about who you're going to buy, but it's also really good to talk about maybe who you shouldn't buy. So I'm going to be sharing with you some strategies that I don't think will work on Top Shot. So if you haven't signed up for the Top Shot newsletter, definitely do that. That link is down in the description as well. Moving on to some sports cards news. If you guys haven't already, definitely sign up for Card Ladder. The sports cards news that I bring here is pretty much, you know, using their platform. I look at their charts. I look at their ladder. It's super easy to use. You can kind of, you know, put your collection in there. A lot of different tools are car ladder, and they're just kind of adding to it, which seem, you know, seems like every quarter there's something new here. So they have the index now. They have the player ladder. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. If you guys haven't signed up for car ladder, definitely do so. They're not sponsoring the channel, but if you do sign up, it does help the channel. So yeah, there's an affiliate link down below. Definitely would appreciate you guys' support. And yeah, this is going to be something that you're going to use as well. This is a great, great tool. And you'll see how I kind of use it a little bit later. But yeah, looking at some sports cards news, I want to talk about some auctions that recently ended. One that went for a pretty penny was Stephen Curry's 2013-2014 Innovation Kaboom. I think Innovation, the set overall, is super underrated. I've talked about that on Instagram a few times. Um, these Kaboom cards, you know, kind of why I think that. I love how they insert these just in random packs. So, you know, I think that's going to make, uh, you know, 2013 Kaboom Kind of kind of a high profile set. I mean, you got the Giannis rookie in there. You got the first time Kaboom cards. And yeah, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the whole comic look, but I can understand why people kind of like it. You know, comics are quote unquote collectibles and these are just going up and up and up and up. It's always talk about the different pillars of sports card investing. There's the investor, there's the player collector, and then there's the set collector. I feel like for this Kaboom set, you know, especially in the PSA 10, it's definitely going to attract the uh, set collector. So yeah, this car went for $8,377. And, you know, it's just a clear indicator that Kaboom is a is, is going to be here for a while. It's going to be one of those inserts 10, 15, 20 years from now that everybody's chasing and talking about. Will it keep up this price point? I'm not 100% sure. Um, it does seem like a lot of money. However, you know, in the short term, I do think if you have a guy that you like, a certain player, that you should be grabbing his Kaboom. You know, there's some there's some cheap Kaboom cards out there, I'm, I'm assuming, like Ben Simmons or Carl Anthony Towns. Like, I feel like those kind of guys who have potential, their Kaboom cards aren't too, too high. So, you know, it might be something to look into, especially if Steph Curry is, you know, going for close to, to 10 grand. You can pick up one for like five or 600 bucks, and that could be a potential play, especially if that guy breaks out. Moving on here, we have Old Faithful. I want to talk about the 2007-2008 Tops Kevin Durant rookie that ended a few days ago. This is a PSA 9 rookie, and it's sold for $1,575. That's a, that's a big increase from where it used to be, about 30% up. They were kind of trending it at 900, 1100 range. It looks like they were trying to go to like 16, 1700 for quite some time. But then, you know, without Kevin Durant coming back, and he was kind of, you know, injured for a little longer than we expected, they kind of settled in that $1,500 price point. A lot of people have been reaching out to me and asking, is it a good buy still? Personally, I still think it has room to grow. So, you know, if that answers your question, then great. Um, I, I think these cards should be right up there with Stephen Curry's. You know, I don't think that they should be any less. Um, I said this once, I'll say it again. I think the Topps Chrome is kind of holding this card back. People aren't, you know, really used to seeing a Topps base be worth more than a Topps Chrome. But I think that's going to happen for Kevin Durant because the, the pop report is so low and they're extremely hard to grade. And he just has a, a ton of top Chrome rookies. So I think this is going to surpass the Topps Chrome. I think this could be a... A ten thousand dollar card, fifteen thousand dollar card for the PSA ten, and I think that the PSA nine could be three thirty five hundred or something along those lines, if not more. So, I mean, I personally think it has room to grow, but that's not investment advice. Obviously, do your own research, have some risk tolerance, and you know, understand that in order for Kevin Durant to touch those price points, he's going to have to win a championship, or he's going to have to look like he's going to win one. He's not LeBron, he's not Steph, where he just has a ton of collectors. And he's just going to go up because they're battling for the cards. He's going to have to win. And, you know, I think he's in a great position to do so. But, you know, things happen. We also saw his 2007, 2008 gold in. And this went for $6,600. I was trying to work out a trade for this card. And I was putting a value of like $3,500 on it. So super cool to see it go for $6,600. We didn't end up getting the trade done because 
well, the, the, the seller thought, you know, the card has some more value. And, and as we can see, he was 100% right. Um, sometimes cars should go for more and they just don't. You know, a few of these listed and they, they ended at relatively cheap prices. And that was just people who, who just weren't educated. You know, they just didn't understand. I've always thought it was too cheap. Gold cards go for a lot. Serial number to 2007, super limited pop. I mean, just a great, great, great card. So, you know, as you see these golds go up in these different parallels, you'll kind of see the base card follow. But yeah, Kevin Durant, his card is still relatively cheap to me, man. Even at 6,600 bucks, I think this card's undervalued. And last but not least here, another Kevin Durant card. This is the last Kevin Durant card, I promise, guys. But if you watch my Instagram live yesterday, you'll know why I'm kind of bringing these up. I think right now we should be looking at playoff contenders, you know, potential championship winners. Um, I, made a, I made a post that said, stop buying underrated guys. You know, in sports cards, sometimes it's okay to buy the popular guy. Sometimes the popular guy is the best buy. And that's what I think the case is here. Uh, I wanted to bring this one up because this is a car we've talked about a few times here. And I, and I said, I thought it was super underrated. And, and now we're starting to see a trend for some pretty solid price points. This is the 2007, 2008 tops 1957 variation rookie of Kevin Durant, uh, PSA 10, and it's over $2,000. If you guys check out car ladder here, you can see, I mean, this car was $690 in December and it, it, it trended for, you know, under a thousand dollars for quite some time. It actually didn't break one thousand dollars until, uh, you know, a, a little over last month, February fifth. They went for one thousand twenty nine dollars. So you know, we reported this, and people had two months to stock up on these. And it wasn't a card that was like hard to get. It's a pop of two forty one, but you know, about 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 ten of these probably sold before it broke that thousand dollar threshold, and and it stayed at a thousand bucks for a pretty long time too. In fact. Um, this car was $1,200 just two or three weeks ago. So yeah, over the last three months, it's up 165%. If you see here with Morning Bins, I actually caught this out. It was $900. I sent this on January 17th. Gave a little analysis to the premium subscribers. Like, hey, 1957 tops. Great looking set, you know, kind of, you know, paying, you know, how much to 1957. I think it's underrated. I said, if this car came out today, We'd be all over it. No different than the uh, 86 Fleer Kevin Durant. So, you know, now it's going for $2,000. Will it be able to keep that price point? I think so. Um, we, we see that it says it's 1800 one recently sold. But I, I think we'll kind of see that. And it will kind of be consistent with this card. And might even go up a little bit more. I mean, a 241 pop is super underrated. But, yeah, up 165%. This is, again, clear case of. Sometimes you just got to buy the popular guy. Sometimes the popular guy, the obvious guy is, is, is the main, you know, is the main target. We don't always need to be buying Landry Shamit or Lonzo Ball and hope that he gets better. Kevin Durant cars are cheap right now. You know, do your research, find some underrated plays and let's grab them. I actually have a video coming out about some of the Kevin Durant cars that I picked up. So definitely, you know, be on the lookout for that. But yeah, morning bins, January 17th, 900 bucks. One of the one of the plays that I was looking at and giving you guys a play here today was during that same time frame, uh, January 20th, actually, I did another uh, morning binge with this 1957 Kevin Durant, and it was talking about his PSA 8. Uh, at the time, they were going for $165. I think I recently uh, checked eBay, and they're still going for around that price point. So the fact that this car, the PSA 10 version, jumped up you know, 165%, but the PSA 8 is still the same price point might be a buying opportunity. So I'll, I'll dig deeper into that. If I see any, I throw them in morning bins. I still think PSA 8s, PSA 9s are great buys. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely look out for these in all grades because it's a remake of the 1957 Tops card. I mean, and, and it's Kevin Durant. Like that's, that's, that's a cool card. So yeah, I think people will be, you know, trying to get their hands on these once they kind of realize that. And moving on from Kevin Durant, I want to talk about the 2008-2009 Topps Chrome Russell Westbrook card. Um, this recently ended for $2,000, and I'm not a big Russell Westbrook fan, but I thought it was pretty interesting that, you know, you look at the OKC boys, uh, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, like they're all kind of killing it right now. Um, and when you look at their car prices, it's just like a big, big difference. You know, I think a Kevin Durant Topps Chrome, let's see, let's use car ladder to kind of see what they're going for. PSA 10. Where's the PSA 10? So yeah, Kevin Durant PSA 10 tops Chrome is going for ten thousand, you know, dollars a little bit down because he's injured, obviously. And then you got James Harden's tops Chrome. This is number 299, a, a small, a really low pop of 54, going for 
you know, 32,000. And then you got Russell Westbrook here with the really low pop as well of 116 going for 2000. Now I'm not saying Russell Westbrook is the caliber of James Harden or Kevin Durant. Um, Obviously, you know, they're all MVP winners. But Kevin Durant has the championships, but you know, this is the kind of things that I look at. These are like the big three from OKC. I feel like if James Harden's top chrome is 32,000, and let's just say Kevin Durant, his top chrome ends up being 15 or 20. Let's just say they win a championship. I feel like people would then go look at Russell Westbrook and say, man, he was a part of that team too. He's way too cheap. And, you know, he's at 2,000. So, you know, it could be a play if you like Russell Westbrook. Obviously, the Wizards aren't going to do anything this year. But, you know, I can, I can see his cards going up just by being affiliated with these guys. No different than like Chris Bosh, whose cards went up just because Carmelo and LeBron went up this year. So I thought I would just point that out and uh, kind of leave it for the question of the day. Do you think Russell Westbrook's Topps Chrome card is underrated? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Happy to be doing Daily Upside again. Quick little recap of what was going on this weekend. I'll be back tomorrow morning with more plays. If you haven't already, definitely check me out on Twitter at High Upside Show. Kind of be tweeting a lot of things there, different plays, NBA games. Just, 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 I like to tweet. I tweet all day. And then, of course, shoot me a follow on Instagram. If you let me know you're from, you know, YouTube, I'll shoot you a follow back. Um, always posting different charts here, questions of the day, as well as some of the cards that I'm looking at and picking up. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy investing.